one of the best exercises for your chest is the bench press. It's only one of the best when you do it correctly. So let's get it done. Right off the bat, to do the bench press properly, just like any other exercise, you're gonna need to be in proper form. And for the bench press, that means laying on the bench with a straight, neutral back. A little bit of an arch is okay, but you definitely don't want any significant or over-exaggerated arch in your back like you'd normally see in powerlifting technique. That style of training isn't one that is conducive for the purposes of lean mass muscle building and strengthening your body into aesthetic proportions that I preach here. It's for straight up power lifting, training for maximal weight output on lifts. The main goal solely being trying to lift as much as you can. Again, that's not what we train for here. We train to build muscle and strength proportionately, building a balanced body. And you're not gonna be able to achieve that with a power lifting style form for this one because it's gonna drastically minimize the range of motion you wanna be getting. So you're not gonna get the deepest stretches or the greatest contractions out of your chest with it. You're not gonna be getting significant enough time under tension to stimulate your chest. There's a whole lot of factors that need to happen that won't be with that kind of form. Again, it's just to be able to push the heaviest weight possible, which is not what gaining muscle, getting stronger, and building aesthetic proportions is all about. Uh, mom! 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 It's not about how much you do, but about how you do it. You don't get all that done by focusing and emphasizing on how much you lift, but on how you lift. That's how you accomplish it. So straight neutral back on the bench is what you'll want to get that done. Very minor arch, if any, and with both feet planted on the ground. So keeping all that form and procedure in mind, you want your body on the bench far up enough so that the bar is directly above your eye line when you're underneath it sitting on the rack. This is pretty much the perfect sweet spot where you don't have to struggle with either having to reach and lift the bar from too far back or having to bring it a ways to position it further forward, which will put a lot of unnecessary strain on your arms and shoulders. And additionally, it's a spot where you won't have to worry about hitting the bar rack pegs while you go through the motion. You literally just lift the bar from above your eyes and position it slightly forward above your chest. But before you do any of that, you need to find your grip. So from here, find your grip. I usually like to put my ring fingers on the lines of the bar, but depending on your arm span may vary. So you want it just a little bit wider than shoulder width. So whatever that is for you, grab the bar there. And you of course want to grip the bar with your fingers and your thumbs wrapped around it. You don't want to use a non-thumb wrapped suicide grip because well, it's named that for a reason. So grip the bar properly with your fingers and your thumbs. Get it off the rack and directly above your chest line. From there, in a steadily and controlled manner, you're just gonna bring it down right towards your chest, right towards your nipples. Then pause right when it's just barely touching your chest. From there, explode up, boom. You wanna make sure you maintain proper form throughout this entire move. Your grip should be comfortably wide enough so that your elbows are dropping right below your hands and staying below your hands throughout the entire motion. If they fall narrower inside your hands, your grip is likely too wide. And if they fall wider outside your hands, your grip may be too narrow. You want a grip that is gonna best get your elbows staying under your hands. So make sure you find that right grip for you and your wingspan. Your elbow placement in this one is super important. Notice how I'm dropping mine during the movement. They're going down, staying below my hands, staying in line with my chest. A lot of guys tend to flare them up and outward. You don't want to do that. That puts a lot of tension on your shoulders, takes tension off your chest, and opens you up to increased injury. So keep them down, tucked throughout the entire move. Placement of the bar on your hands is also super important, both for safety and how much weight you'll be able to push. A lot of people tend to rest it on the upper part of their palms, but you really don't want to do that because it's gonna put a lot of unnecessary stress on your wrists because it causes your hands to bend back from the load of the weight with that grip. And that shouldn't be happening at all. 
Instead, you want the bar resting right on the lower part of your palms where your wrists don't have to bend back awkwardly like in the first position and they won't have to be uncomfortably stressed since your arms would now be bearing the load of the weight with this grip. This, of course, is also going to help you push more weight than you would be able to with the other grip, which is what building muscle is all about. It's a pretty subtle part of everything, but it has a pretty significant impact because it's going to save you from potentially screwing up your wrists and closes that window to a risk of injury way down. And again, it's also going to help you lift more weight in the process. And make sure you control the weight throughout the entire movement. Don't bounce the bar off yourself. Don't drive your hips off of the bench. Keep your body planted to the bench, feet planted on the ground. And don't drive from your feet, drive from your chest. You definitely don't want to drive this by pushing through your feet or by trying to power it through your legs. It's gonna make it way easier to break the proper form you want to maintain. It's likely to make you drive your butt up and off the bench, get you into that overarching back position you don't want, and get you pushing in all the wrong places which is going to translate to poor results so keep your feet planted and stay focused on driving and engaging this all through your chest that is what you're trying to build here so you always want it to be the main driving force behind the move and always make sure you never stop short of the bottom of the motion always get the deepest fullest stretch you can and likewise at the height of the motion squeeze the strongest contraction that you can out of your chest maintaining tension throughout your chest and your muscles all throughout those two points performing a full range of motion and fully engaging your muscles and keeping them fully engaged throughout that full range of motion carrying it through the entire move this is what building muscle is all about quality stimulation quality time under tension getting the best stretches and the best contractions out of your muscles that you can out of every single rep from every single set for any and every exercise in every single workout that you do and all of this form and bench press procedure carries over to any other type of bench press as well no matter if you're doing flat bench press decline bench press or incline bench press nothing changes for how you want to approach them Everything about what you should do and what you shouldn't do all stays the same. All the same rules and principles apply. And this exact same form for bench presses can be applied when doing dumbbell chest presses as well because they're essentially the same move, except you're just swapping a barbell for dumbbells, which means you're gonna be recruiting more muscle fibers from the extra stabilization required to move two separate weights through space, as opposed to just one fixed object, which is a bit more difficult, so you'll likely be lifting less weight for dumbbell presses, but without the straight barbell determining the bottom of the motion whenever it hits your chest, you'll also be able to get a bit of a deeper stretch at the bottom of the motion of chest presses, getting a slightly wider range of motion out of it compared to bench presses. So both exercises have their pros and cons over the other. So it's best to use both and incorporate both into your training to get the best of both worlds. And to get the best out of either exercise, Taking the steps provided and using the form demonstrated in this video is going to help you do that and help you build the best chest possible. All right, reaping the benefits of this one is all about controlling the weight, not lifting big, lifting right. Keep control of that weight. Don't bounce it off yourself. Keep your chest fully engaged. Keep that tension in your chest throughout the entire motion. Never relax your muscles, especially on the way down. You wanna keep full tension throughout the entire movement to get the full results out of this one. And there it is, Super Squad. Train like an average Joe, stay an average Joe. Train like a superhero, become a superhero. And for even more superhero training tips and tutorials, make sure to check out the rest of the channel for dedicated muscle building and weight loss videos and playlists to help you stay on track with your transformation.